everybody's heard about the bird. Bird, bird, bird. The bird's a winner. Well, a bird, bird, bird. Bird is a winner. Well, a bird, bird, bird. Well, a bird is a winner. Well, a bird, bird, bird. The bird. Seven. Ba 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 ma 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 ba ba ma 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 ba ba ma 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 ba ba. You done? Quit chewing on my shoes. Or you get the bird is the word. Hajime! So when I got back to Minnesota, I was kind of in a mental low again, still trying to figure out if I even wanted to go to the champs. It was my rest week, so I didn't do anything on Monday. Tuesday, I went to vault practice. I went into vault practice like angry and frustrated. I wanted to make some big changes because I was, again, embarrassed about what happened in Milrose and felt like I let, let a lot of people down. Um, Steve and Caroline were there that day, which is awesome. So Steve was finding all sorts of things wrong with my vault, which is making me even a little more frustrating because I couldn't fix them all at once and I had the meet this weekend. There was no way I could uh, fix all these things in one practice for the weekend. And the best way I've heard it put, soup is good if they have three or four ingredients, but if you get like 12 ingredients in your soup, in your soup then all of a sudden you have <laughs> soup. <laughs> Caroline was there telling me kind of the same things we've been working on, but adding a couple new ones, and that was frustrating too, and then I finally was just getting so frustrated because I couldn't do what they wanted me to do, and I was pissed off at myself. Okay, this time just line up your putt, don't even look at the hole, huh? Aim for a spot six inches in front of the ball. Line up, spot six inches in front of the ball. Okay, six inches. Yes. All of a sudden, uh, Cammie, one of the gopher girls, came up to me and just goes, Sean, what were three good things about your vault? And it, like, hurt my brain. I didn't die, and I didn't maim myself. <laughs> I couldn't come up with any more positive things that happened with my vault, but it hit me because I made her do that about two months ago when she was beating herself up mentally, and it was exactly what I needed. I wasn't looking at what was working and maybe how to maybe polish that off a little bit. It was changed the way I was thinking, and it was hard at the time. I wanted to shake her and be like, I can't think of anything. It was good. It made me stop and go talk to Steve and Caroline and just be like, All right, let's just pick one or two things that's gonna help me this weekend. I can't fix everything in this practice. And things started to change. So at this practice, we found out why I was shooting to the left because I was still shooting to the left at the beginning of practice. And it was when my arm was away from my head. We filmed from the backside this time. We found some really big things we want to try and fix for the outdoor <laughs> season. My left foot always seems to take off on the right side of the runway when you're looking at the pit. And I never know why. I just always assumed it's just one of those weird things I do forever. But we're thinking if we try and fix it, maybe I'll be able to go through the middle of the box. But long story short, um, we decided we're going to bango my ear for the meat uh, and then bottle rocket my right leg. So we created a bango bottle rocket, and that was what we did. You're not mad? I'm not mad. Sean is mad though, but that's kind of, you know. That's my style. <laughs> when I was a pole vaulter, I was mad. Yeah. INTJ. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's those are the two cues I was going into the US Champs with. When I got back home, we even got more snow, and uh, we played with Squish in the snow for a while. So you people complaining about four, five, seven inches of snow, watch this. <sighs> 
It's so deep. Let's go, buddy. Come on. Come on, good boy. Oh. Good boy. Guys, where did I stop? You're missing it. Good boy. Oh, good boy. You are the best dog ever. He's almost no. This is gonna close, guys. I think I'm done. <laughs> so I wasn't feeling super confident about the champ still, and the the big the big thought that I couldn't get out of my head was, I jumped 50 my first week, 550, 18 feet, and the next week I jumped 179, and the next week I jumped 174, and the next week I just jumped 17. I am going the complete opposite direction of the way I feel like it should be going. Sounds like you have mental problems, man. Yeah, you have mental problems, man. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, it'd be nice to progress and get better every week, but you know, maybe you're gonna go backwards and have a good meet, but it doesn't mean you might have 15 no heights and all of a sudden you have a PR. I mean, that's just how it goes too, but I wasn't looking at it like that, so I was... Destroying my mind mentally, again. You're going to the mental institution. Beat it! So when I got there, it was an early, I, my flight was almost going to get canceled because another big blizzard was coming through and I was like, oh god, no, I'm not noodles again, I'm sick of planes and... But uh, we got out and then an hour later all the flights got canceled. So I just got out, or I got to the hotel, got right on the bus right away, went to go get my credentials. I am a master of getting free stuff. Got dinner and went to bed. That's what happened. So that night I was like by myself in a hotel room and my thoughts were just swirling around again. And I talked to Carrie for like over an hour trying to get my negativity out of my head because I was like, maybe if I talk it out, we'll just get out. It definitely organized how I was looking at things. That's probably the best thing that could have happened because now that things were organized, I was starting to see things a little bit more clearly. About a half hour after that, I was getting a text um, from a close friend who's like, Hey, hey how's, how are you doing? You excited? <laughs> I was honest. I was like, I'm pretty nervous because my brain isn't in the right spot. Dre said, You're weird. But in a really good way. But it sounds like you're trying to fit your round self into a square space. What worked for you in the past is owning your weirdness and making it so weird is something special. It works for you since it is you. Stop trying to get back in the box when you excel outside of it. You're totally right. It was it, because I, I took that class this summer, I was lumped myself into that way of training, and even last year I didn't exactly know what I was doing 100% of the time, but I went in there like... Alright, I don't feel good today, I'm gonna take a little bit off, and oh, I feel great today, I'm gonna do a little bit more. And I haven't been doing a lot of that, and same with the vault, I've been trying to put myself to vault like other people, and Steve and Caroline the whole time have always been saying, You need to throw some more input in for us, because you know what you're talking about when it comes to the pole vault. So, instead of having two coaches, why don't you just start speaking up, and then we can have three. And three's gonna be better than two. And I haven't been doing that, because I haven't trusted myself with it. But, yeah, I'm gonna own, own my weirdness, so to say. And that's kind of what sparked me going back on the right path. So the next day, I was finishing making Carrie's Valentine's day video because that's what i do because i'm too poor to buy like flowers and fancy dinner i watched all those year in reviews and i kept watching them and there wasn't a lot of pole vault in there there was like me skydiving and mountain biking and causing shenanigans and uh you know traveling and doing all this different weird stuff it just hit me for the past few months i was letting pole vault define me as a person pole vault is just what i do it's not who i am and that was <laughs> that was huge for me because i was like so i had this bad meat it must mean i'm a bad person bad vault i'm not training hard enough I had another bad need, I'm letting these people down, I'm not training hard enough, and I'm not doing as much as I should. It doesn't matter how well I do, I mean, I did my best. And as long as I do my best, that's all anyone can ask for, and if they try and ask for more, then they don't know what they're talking about, because they don't know how hard I'm working at this. But it's really hard believing it, so it just took a combination of a couple people, and, you know, me working through it on my own. Long story short, it wasn't fun. Because I felt like I was failing all the time, not just as a vaulter, but as a person, which I kind of realized I wasn't. <laughs> you know? so I went into the meet, and I didn't even care about the results. I just was like, I was happy to be there, and I just wanted to have some fun. And that was my only goal, is to have fun at the U.S. Champs. Waiting is always the hardest part. I just feel like I'm pacing, I'm ready to leave, and I'm going to leave about... Way too early, but that's okay, because I'd rather be early than late. I don't know why I'm seeing everything. Why? But we should do it. And done. Work on my two cues. Hopefully they work. And just be happy to be there. That I'm one of the best in the, in the U.S. right now. Obviously, because you wouldn't be in the meet if you weren't. And I'll do what I can. And all the stress went away. All the weight off my shoulders. Everything was gone. I just went in there, and it was just me versus the bar, having fun. And that was it. <laughs> so 
sounds so simple, but why couldn't I do it earlier? <laughs> so as we're warming up, you know, I'm, I'm trying to have some fun, and, and then I ran into Sam Bell, who is Earl Bell's son. I was like, man, how are you feeling? You know, you're feeling great. I feel awesome. I'm so happy to be here. This is the coolest experience of my entire life. That is exactly how I felt last year and the first time I was at the Champs. I was like, how did I lose that? That just added to me having more fun because like, God, yeah, Sam's just having a blast. He doesn't really care what happens. He's just pumped to be competing on this stage, you know? So, and then I was like, so am I. <laughs> this is sweet. Look what we're doing. Let's do something cool today, you know? Uh, I don't have a, any video because I didn't have a coach down there. Because they were coaching the Gophers, which they need to be doing that. <laughs> There's more of them. And so I asked uh, Joe Dial if he would help me out a little bit. And Joe got me started and um, I can't thank him enough for just getting me rolling. Joe's one of the best pole vault coaches in the United States and I was just happy to have him. A couple days prior I asked Danny Wilkerson if he'd help me coach because he coached me in Reno and uh, we seemed to click pretty well but uh, his taxi and flight were running late so after my first bar Danny showed up. I feel I don't really know if Joe still wanted to help me out but I, I just started listening to Danny thinking um, Joe probably wanted to put all of his focus on Jack with. So thanks Joe Dial, thanks Danny for getting me started. Uh, the only video I have, it's from Steve Chappell's YouTube page, um, it's my 555 jump uh, where I almost landed on the pole and shish kebobbed myself. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not the prettiest jump ever, I think I saw the pole coming back my way and kind of lost posture on top of the pole and then everything started going kind of crazy. But um, it was still a make and a PR and I think I I have like 60, 65 in there on that pole, maybe even 70 if I just line things up like I have been in practice, but um, like I said, I kind of lost it, but uh, no, it was, it was a good jump, and I was just pumped not to <laughs> have a pole fly up um, some unmentionables. No! Dude, Chapel, I ripped this off of YouTube. Please don't get mad at me for stealing it, but I don't have any video. Please, everyone, go to Chapel's page. He has nothing but videos of pole vaulters for everywhere he goes, so check out all of his videos that he has on there. Go like, go like my video on there. I think it almost has a thousand views, and less than a week, so that's kind of awesome. I wish, <laughs> wish it was on my YouTube channel. <laughs> the good news after the meet is that I feel like there's still a lot more in the tanks. Things are starting to click. Yeah, we're, we're gonna grab five meter poles and just pack them for outdoors. I'm gonna take a couple weeks off and then start uh, training again. And uh, the first meet, I'll probably do a short approach meet Arizona, maybe fulls, and then probably open up my full approach meet in Mount Sac. But fun is gonna stay at the top of my list, and if things stop being fun, I need to reassess because that was one of the most miserable seasons I've ever had mentally, even though it was probably the best indoor season I've ever had product wise. The process wasn't very fun. <laughs> there, thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate it, and I'm gonna end with the message I left on my. Instagram, so like I always subscribe, share, like, Instagram, whatever else, you know. Boom. Thanks again for watching and supporting. See you later. Okay, bye. It was insane. Probably the best women's competition I have ever seen. Kylie Hudson jumped 475. What? It was incredible. Kylie Hudson looked just sick. It was the third highest jump that an American's ever had. But then, Jen Schur, what? We saw her go for the American record at 16.1 or 4.90, and she just blew it up. It was just, it was just a toast. And I just went, oh my god, she could potentially break the world record today. She went from 4.90 to 5.02. And first jump, breaks the world indoor pole vault record. I was there. I got to see the world indoor pole vault record be broken. It was insane.